This is Robert Merritt again now with a uh, race video from Sunday morning at NAS Coronado, uh, the Coronado Speed Festival. Um, it's a little bit convoluted here in that I don't have uh, the Saturday qualifying race, but I have Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. This is Sunday morning. We had a pretty darn good feel, about 19 cars total, maybe 17 uh, by the time we got to Sunday. I missed uh, two sessions, which almost never happens, uh, with some CV joint issues where they were coming apart but not breaking. It took Bob quite a while, a lot of head scratching to figure out how to get it to stay together. But he did, and I was able to run the, the, the three races, qualifying race one and race two on Sunday. Um, great thanks to uh, Dave Dowskin. He uh, loaned us a couple of the CV joints. Appreciate that, Dave. And I threw this photo in there just because I like it. A lot of people around, I guess. I'm talking to Alex Miller, our licensing director. Uh, it's the fastest weekend I've ever had at Coronado. Um, it shows 104.9 there. Uh, officially, it was 105.028. I managed to finish fourth in this Sunday morning race. And since I wasn't able to qualify like I wanted, I actually went from 17th to 7th. And then in this race, from 7th to 10th and back to 4th uh, uh, with some help from some cars hitting cones and all. Show you that right now. This is uh, the grid up for feature race one on Sunday. Robert finished yesterday from starting in 17th to 7th place. So he is 7th place on the grid right now. So I think Carrie Ann probably clarified uh, where we started in the qualification race yesterday. I don't have any uh, in-car video of it, so that's why we're uh, doing the Sunday morning race. As you just saw the, the start, they, the leaders took off and then stopped and then took off again, and that allowed three cars right there to go by me, as you saw. It's able to pass Dave back right there. Uh, uh, there's another car right there, or left, a red car. That's Al Al Sierra. He almost got past us uh, as well, uh, but not quite here. I passed him here coming out of turn three and into turn four. He's had inside position here. And so, whoops, almost turned in a little early there, didn't I? <laughs> All right, so we're on the back straight now, headed down to the chicane. And that's Paul in an identical uh, Walt RT5 like mine. And I know I have a pretty good chance of passing him here, and if not here, uh, down into turn one. I can also see a little further ahead to the replica Ferrari that's two cars ahead, and then to the Formula Atlantic right here. It's a little offline, and yeah, hmm, Paul and I both go by him. Sorry about that, Jim, James, Sparks. And now onto the front uh, straight here. I've got a pretty good jump on Paul, and I'm feeling pretty confident I'll be able to take him down here. But, the first corner. I think we'll switch back to native audio now for a moment. Go baby go! 
right. So that was the external view, uh, view from the stands of the uh, second second lap and the start of the third here after I had passed Paul and now I'm chasing the Ferrari. I'm back in seventh place where I started from finally and now I'm going to work on the Ferrari. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to pass him into turn four down in the hairpin but I'm not sure I'll be able to stay in front of him. It's a uh, 1964 I think uh, but it's got a, it's a replica with a big Chevy in it. However, as you can see here, coming out of turn three into four, I'm, I'm not able to outbreak and turn in here. So this is that uh, inside view of what you just saw just after I passed the Ferrari going into the chicken and I want to thank Joe for uh, using good judgment and not going in there with me. That would not have been pretty I don't think. Uh, I'm thinking Joe might have a chance catching me on the front here so I really am pushing hard and uh, this next lap which we'll watch in its entirety is my fourth lap and the fastest I've ever run here. Uh, down in the bottom left hand corner it says 104.99, the official time was actually 105.028. Uh, I'm also, as you can tell there, I see a couple cars in front of me. One of them is a guy named Damien and a, uh, a Swift. I believe that Swift is a... Come on, yeah. I don't know what year that Swift is. 1991, I think. And so I'm chasing him. Uh, there's an Indy light car in front of him, Ken, I believe, in green and white. And the truth is, I'm not thinking I'm really going to be able to pass him, but uh, I'm right in the middle of my lap, uh, hot laps that you might have saw earlier in the uh, lap listing. The laps two through seven or eight were uh, all in the 105s, and the fastest I've ever done here. So uh, after this fourth lap completes here, the fastest one so I can review it next year. <laughs> we'll uh, jump to the um, eighth or ninth lap here and pick up a few more shots here. 105.028. I was pleased with that and with those this group of laps. So here we go. I think we're going to skip ahead to lap eight. Yeah, and you're supposed to watch my hands here coming out of this next turn. Right here, we'll see it. Yeah, oh, full lock, and you saw me wave my right arm in the air. It's because I jammed the heck out of my right index finger. <laughs> Hurt like heck.
come back. That's half the fun for them, though. To pass them. Okay, this is picking up uh, at the end of the ninth lap, the in-car video of what you just saw from uh, the stands with Carrie Ann's camera. And as you can tell, I'm <laughs> down in turn six and seven, right behind Damien and Ken in the Indy car. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about getting a pass on them. I'm not sure I'll be able to stick again because of Ken's big horsepower and all, but what the heck, I think I'll give it a try. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've got a good jump on them here. And headed down into uh, turn one, planning on now breaking game in here, and that works out. As you heard, I pass them and then get passed back. You'll see why here in a moment here. Right there was a yellow flag that Damien apparently didn't see because he passes me, kind of surprised me there. And I'm not sure what's going on, but I decided to stick close to him here. And then on the right, I see kind of a half-hearted white flag. <laughs> so. And some radio comms are coming in about a barrel being hit. As it turns out, uh, I think um, Cal Meeker and uh, Martin Lauber both, or Chris Farrell, got into this barrel here, which you just saw. It scared the heck out of me, so I was glad I had backed off. Anyway, uh, two of the cars that I expected to be in front of me, because I was in sixth place here, uh, got knocked out by the cones. So I end up finishing fourth here. I'm... I, I'm really happy since I had the uh, issue with the first two sessions, and uh, I don't mind, uh, even though I had third for a little while there, I don't mind waiting for the Sunday afternoon race to see what I can do, figure out uh, way ahead where I thought it would be, so great day. As we're going into the pits here, I see uh, that car and Paul's car sitting off to the left there. It looked like they had some contact, had to talk to the black flag guys. Uh, that seemed to be going around there. I managed to stay out of that for the whole weekend. There's my wife on the left, clapping and running, her usual mode. And now I'm just driving back through the pits. Thought it'd be interesting to see just how many cars there are. There were about 235 uh, race cars, about 300, 400 uh, car show cars there, and about 15 uh, airplanes from the military there. A lot of activity, uh, really a great event. The track's not the greatest. It's only 1.6 miles and a little rough, but uh, it, it's a it's a cool event. Uh, supports the military, and I always have a good time there. I'm going to switch this back here to Native Audio and just let you hear the, the chit-chat as we're in the pits. My wife's as cute as always. Love you, honey, and thanks for all the great shots. I think I had a 104.9. No kidding. You look great. Fun racing. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, 104.9, right a 105.3, and a 105.5. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> well, I backed off after all the chaos. <laughs> Hi, honey. Good job, baby. You look great out yeah. there. How's the car running? Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> good. It looks awesome. Awesome, and I did not uh, give it any quarter at all. Yeah. Um, I am passing Austin and Al yeah, to 10 yeah, and 11 on the street. Like this and I can easy. actually, okay. I either have two car lengths back and Al will run into him on the end, on the, on the I start on to it, or I even look beside him right, one time. But I mean, uh, the middle yeah. section there, yep. he calls me, you know, I mean, that ain't the same. Uh, you know. Okay. You know. I don't think he's got 1600. Okay, you know, it was like, and then in turn one. Wow, well, that looked good, great. You were having fun with the two in front of you. And you passed them. Hopefully, a few people will listen to this section here. I just want to thank Bob Morris so much. This is our 37th race weekend in 51 months. That's one race every month and a half. I, it's just been unbelievable what a job he's done keeping that car running and allowing me just to have the experiences of a lifetime, Bob. I can't thank you enough. <laughs>